All right. So four seven C, we're going to look into um, our scatter plots again. Remember last lesson, we started on scatter plots and how to plot them. And even in that same lesson yesterday, we learned about how to identify your EV and your RV. Now, this is very important because in order to do a proper scatter plot, we have to understand which variable affects what. Okay, so in this case, actually, let's go to the next example. In this case, for example, here, we know that age, your age should no normally affect how many videos you should watch because the number of videos you watch doesn't really determine how what your age could be. Like if you watch 100 videos, that doesn't mean that you're 10 years old or 13 years old. You could be a 60 year old that's really into YouTube videos. Okay, so it really varies depending on the um, person. But we are at least know that depending on your age, statistically, we can figure out how many videos you normally will watch as in there is a trend. And we can see that when we plot the graph here for it, that there is a general trend of the data. Like it's not random. So when I talk about trend, okay, we're not, we're talking about, is there a pattern that you can see? If there were dots all over the place like this, then you could uh, identify and say there is no correlation or there is no connection because it's too random. But as you can see in this graph, you can see that the younger someone is, on the in terms of age the higher the number of videos that they'll watch and the older they are as you can see on this end of the graph the lower the number of videos tend to be okay um, and that is generally going to be your indicator of whether or not there's going to be some sort of connection so if you can see that there's a clear direction that the dots are going then there is a connection between the two variables that you're working with if there isn't then it's going to be random so going off that, we're going to try and interpret then a scatter plot. When you have a trend happening, there are certain things you need to be able to explain or state in order to prove that there is a trend. So these are things that we need to write or to mention whenever we ask you interpret the trend or describe the trend of this data, okay, or describe the correlation of this data. So when you look at a scatter plot, there's four things you have to try and um, look for, okay? Obviously, we know what a scatter plot looks like. It's got an X, it's got a Y axis, and it's got the two variables. Remember, on the Y axis, does anyone remember what variable should go there? You've got two options, explanatory and response. What should go on the bottom? Anyone remember? EV, the explanatory, and what should go on the Y axis? The RV, which is the response. So just remember that on any, uh, any graph, EV on the bottom, RV on the y-axis. So this is what you're looking for in a scatter plot. Direction, that's the first one. When you're talking about direction, you're talking about which way the graph is going and you're reading it from left to right, okay? So if you're looking at it left to right, are the dots going downwards or are they going upwards, okay? Whenever you're looking at a graph and you, under you see it as it's going upwards, we refer to that as positive, although it doesn't say here. I'm going to put it here, actually. The options that you have for direction are positive, okay? If it's going upwards. So if your graph or your dots are going upwards like this, I'll draw it here for you. You can actually draw this as well. Okay, oh, it's not it's very clear. Actually, let me, let me yeah, I'll, I'll put it here. That's a positive graph right there. Okay, the dots go upwards. Okay, anyone know what direction negative would be? Good, downwards. So if your graph is going downwards like this, then that would be a negative graph. Okay, so positive means it's going up, negative means it's going down. Okay, that's the direction. <clears throat> So also, you can also think of positive as increasing. Right? So I'll put it down as increases. Okay, positive increases. And then you can think of decreases as the negative going down. Okay. Another thing you have to look for in any graph are your outliers. So normally for most graphs, they may or may not have an outlier. I think most of the time they won't. But if there is... Then we'll point it out. Yes, sir. Well, 
yeah, the first one here, it's really hard to tell which direction it is, isn't it? Can you guys see? Why is it hard to tell here why that it, you can't like what direction it is? Think about the variables, age and height. Is there a connection to them? No. So that means it's too random. Your age doesn't determine how high you are, nor does your height determine how old you are. Therefore, your dots are just going to be all over the place. So in this case, you would say that there is no... Well, actually, in here, you would say no correlation whatsoever. So you don't even need to talk about um, whether it's going positive or negative. You'd say it's uh, no correlation. Okay. We'll go through that in a second. Yeah. The other thing you're looking for are outliers, like I mentioned. So it's basically data that doesn't quite fit the rest of the scatter plot. So generally speaking, if you look at this one, that's probably an outlier because it's really out there compared to the rest of the data. Um, form is the next one. So form is talking about the shape. Okay. When you're talking about the shape, it's not necessarily the um, skewness, whether it's positively skewed or negatively skewed. Okay. There's only two options, linear or nonlinear. So I'll draw out some examples here of linear and nonlinear. For a linear graph, okay, what that looks like is basically you've got your scatter plot and you can see that the dots okay, form somewhat of a straight line, as in you can kind of put a straight line through it. That's what he's talking about if it's linear. If it's nonlinear, okay, that, what that would look like, and I'm sorry for my crappy drawings, so a non-linear graph might look something like this. It might arch or go in a weird direction like that because you can't really put a straight line through it. So this would be non-linear. Like you could put a curve in it, for example. Or it could even be, you know, any other whatever direction. It could look like this. It could snake around like that. It really varies on the graph. But non-linear graphs, you can't really put a straight line through it. Okay, that's what you're looking for if the graph is linear or non-linear. So, so far you've got direction. Is it positive, negative? Outliers, list them out if there's any. Oh, one thing with outliers, just tell me what the coordinate is for that outlier, okay? Form, tell me if it's linear or non-linear. So linear means you can put a line through it. Non-linear means the, the dots sort of curve around and it's a bit too random. Now, the last one is strength. Strength talks about how closely the points fit uh, together. Okay, or it says here single smooth or curved line. Whenever you're talking about strength, the more compact the dots are, the stronger it is. So let's say uh, for strength, there's three options. Okay, so I'll put them down here. Hopefully you can fit for strength. You've got three options for strength. You've got strong. So for a strong graph, the dots tend to be quite close to each other, almost to the point, okay, where they nearly make the straight line for you. You've also got uh, moderate, okay, and for that, so if you compare this as a strong, moderate would mean that the dots are a little bit more spread out, but you can still tell, okay, that they're going in a certain direction. And then for weak, Okay, I would argue that the dots are almost, there's almost no connection between them, but you can still sort of tell that there is a direction that they're going in. Okay, but they're very, very wide apart. Okay, so those are the three sort of indicators of what strength they are. Strong, really compact, moderate, a little bit spread out, and weak, very spread out. But with all three, you can still tell the direction of them. Like for example, for weak, even though that, that is uh, quite spread apart, what direction would you say that is? Probably positive. Okay, it looks pretty positive. And similarly, again, you could say, for example, here, okay, that graph looks weak. Okay, it could look weak, but it's still going in a negative direction. You can sort of see it. It's harder to tell. Later on, instead of using these terms, Okay, we actually end up finding a numerical value and it tells us what the strength is going to be. Okay, yes. This one here. Uh, here, this one here. All right, so this one, I would argue, because it's so spread apart, it's really hard to tell which way it's going. Um, but if, you, if I had to describe it, it's probably going positive, more positive than negative. 
okay? But I would say because, again, looking at the variables, these variables shouldn't have any form of connection to each, each other. It should one doesn't determine the other. Okay, your age doesn't determine your height, and your height doesn't determine your age. Most of the time, yeah. But like, for example, though, if you think about kids and babies, you know, a zero zero year old child isn't going to be like two meters tall, for example. They're gonna be like, you know, 40 centimeters or something like that. Okay. Because if you look at the age as well, you're looking at the age between 16 and 32. Generally, when you hit 16, 18, that's when you normally will reach your maximum height. Okay, so I would say here, the direction is no direction. Okay, or as a final answer for it, you would actually write no correlation. Okay, because it's too random. Second one here, okay, so if we were, this one's pretty straightforward, we know that it's going to be positive. Okay, it's moving in a upward direction, left to right. Okay, positive. This third one here, this would be negative in terms of direction. Okay, it's going downwards. Okay, and you could even argue that this may be an outlier. Okay, but it's not asking us to uh, identify that, it's just asking us what's the direction, okay? So you've got positive going up, negative going down. Form, okay, let's look at form here. So we, when it comes to form, remember, you're trying to tell me, can you put a straight line through the data? So if you can, that means that it would be linear. So this first one would have a linear form. Okay, this first graph, because you can see Okay, that it, there is a line that you can't put through. Anyone want to tell me what's the direction? Negative. Negative, cool. And what would you argue the uh, strength to be? So is it, would you say it's strong, moderate, or weak? I would say, yeah, probably strong or maybe even moderate. Okay, because of how the outlier might affect it. Okay. Also, if these dots weren't here and they were a bit here, then definitely strong. But it could also be moderate. But really, at the end of the day, um, sometimes it can be a bit subjective, but there is a numerical value that we use to actually figure these out. And we'll go through that later on in the next few lessons. This here, okay, you would say that this is non-linear. Okay, because again, the graph, yes, there is a pattern, but it's not a straight line. It's a curved line. Okay, so it's a non-linear graph. All right, strength. Right here, strength now, looking at the strength. So the strength, remember, is how close the dots are compacted with each other or how close they are to the point where they can make a straight line. So the first two here, or the top one here, is quite similar to this one here. There's no relationship, no correlation. It's pretty random, okay? So that's what a random graph will look like, just dots all over the place, no relationship, okay? And you could also say no correlation for that one because it's just too random. This one here, I mean, let me go ahead real quick to see. All right. This third one, or the, these next two here, you've got weak, negative, linear. So already now, these are the sort of answers that we're looking for when it comes to describing a graph, okay? For now, though, we're just going to talk about the strength. So these ones are going to be weak because you can see that the dots are quite spread apart, but they do still form some sort of a line. These next two here, moderate negative linear and moderate positive linear. So moderate because the dots are a little bit closer. They kind of form a line. And the last one is obviously strong. Okay, strong negative. It's going down and it's linear because you can see and you can put a line through. Same with um, the positive. Okay, now we're going to get into, for, let's go to the next page, how to answer these. So these are, you're going to now tell me, oh, I'm going to show you, sorry, how to answer this and what I want you to write down whenever we ask you these questions. Okay, so we're going to describe the relationship or the association. There's a key word there. You will see this a lot. When it says describe the association, you're talking about the strength, the form, direction, and if there are any outliers. Those four things that we talked about earlier. Okay, you're going to mention all of this. 
uh, what's the strength, what's the form, what's the direction, and if there are any outliers. So first one here, okay? Anyone want to tell me what do you think the strength might be? Yes, Anthony. Yeah, I would say it's moderate. Some might say it's weak, okay? I, I may or may not accept both because looking at it, it's, it's very subjective, okay? But I would say it's moderate, okay? Let's not write down anything for now, though. We know it's moderate. What's the direction? Anyone know? It's negative. What's the form? Is it linear, nonlinear? It's linear, okay? Because you can put a straight line through it. Are there any outliers? No. Okay, cool. So this is how we set out our answers then. So you want to make sure you write it like this. There is A. And then you start talking about the strength, the form, direction. So Anthony said it's moderate, so we'll go with that. There is a moderate form. Is it linear, non-linear? We know it's linear. So linear. And then is it positive, negative? Talk about the direction. Negative. There is a moderate linear negative association between, and then you have to tell me what are the two variables, which are age, and the other variable is hemoglobin count. Okay, so you want to make sure all answers when you're talking about the association, looks something like this. There is A, and then all you have to change is what is the strength, what is the form, what is the direction, and then tell me the variables. Okay, those are the five things that you have to mention. There is A, strength, form, direction, association between what's the two variables that you're working with. Okay, what about this one? All right, so tell me, guys, what do you think? Is there, uh, what's the strength for this one? Moderate. Strong to moderate. Let's say it's compared to this. Let's say it's strong, okay? We'll say, firstly, it's strong. Which direction should it, well, does it look like it's going? Probably po positive, it's upwards. And is it a linear or nonlinear form? Have a think. I would say it's nonlinear. So, in terms of your answer, there is a... So strong, because we know that's the strength, non-linear, and the direction is positive. Association between, and then you talk about two variables, age and time underwater. Okay, so there's your answer. You want to make sure you lay out your answer like this all the time. In year 12, this is exactly what they look for. Okay. Last one. Uh, can anybody give me anything on this one? Yes. Uh, so, say it again loudly so we can hear it. Uh, there's Good. Okay, so I would argue the same thing. Because it's so random, there's no direction, it's too all over the place. The form, I can't really say it's linear or non-linear. So you would say, you could say there is no connection, or you could say there is no, what, would, what did you say, Zach? There is no, no relation. Um, technically, I think what I've seen in a textbook is there is no correlation. Okay, so they would write there is no correlation. Because, again, we're talking about the, uh, actually, association. Or you could even use association as well. Correlation is what I've seen in the textbook. So you could say there is no correlation between hours spent cooking per week. That's too much. Hours per week and hours spent using computer per week okay okay so there's no connection whatsoever 
you can say what Zach said, you can say no association. Um, and yeah, that's kind of kind of what I've been talking about here anyway. No correlation, no association. All right. Any questions about that? So that's how we lay out our answers for these questions. When you're talking about association, make sure you talk about all this. So what's the strength? What's the form? What's the direction? If there's any outliers, you can also list them. Unfortunately, in these ones, there weren't any outliers, so no examples for that, but that's okay. But that's essentially what you're looking for, or what I look for when I want to see strength, form, and direction. Okay, Or when you ask for describing the association, or describing, and I think as well, I've seen this before, describe the correlation. So they all mean exactly the same thing. Correlation, association, um, and yeah, or connection. Cool. All right. 